Welcome to Spilling the Loyalty, a Digitas podcast. I'm co-host Brad Blackman, EVP Global Portfolio Lead. And I'm co-host Melissa Berger, Chief Solutions Officer. So excited to be back in New York. Melissa, it's been, I feel like you and I haven't seen each other in two months. I mean, we've caught up this morning with Mandy, but like, we haven't seen each other in about two months. It's been a while. It's been a while. We need to do a proper catch up. Oh, exactly. You mentioned Mandy. We have a special guest here with us today. Yeah. So Mandy, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role? Absolutely. So I'm Mandy Harvey Smith. I am a director at Racetrack in Atlanta. Um, I oversee marketing analytics, research, as well as the paid media strategy. Um, I've been with Racetrack for about two years. And prior to that, I was on the agency side. So excited Perfect. to be here. So for those of us in, across the U.S. or global who might not know Racetrack, I do because I'm a massive fan. So does Melissa. <laughs> yes. Tell us a little bit about Racetrack as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Racetrack is a family-owned C-store in the Southeast. Um, we have been around for quite some time. We are celebrating a 90th anniversary, which we're really excited wow. about. 90th? Yes. I had no idea. Yes. One of the best people. I know. Yes, yes. Um, so we are all over the Southeast. We have um, a pretty... Um, well-known brand in in that region, yeah, but do. we're very focused on food service and kind of evolving there and making sure that we're continuing to evolve with our customer. So yeah, I'm a massive fan. As those of you know, I have a Southern accent, so I'm from Tennessee. So <laughs> racetrack is a part of my life in it Tennessee. Is. So it yeah. is, and we'll talk a little bit more about you know taking a right or a left depending on your kind of feelings in those mm-hmm. moments. And um, you know, because Brad and I both know racetrack very well on my road trips that's what I wait for. Right. You, Mm -hmm. and now there are certain things where I know exactly where they are and we kind of plan around that because we've talked, you want a nice bathroom, Mm -hmm. you want a nice experience, you want some Mm -hmm. good snacks and food. Yeah. The food service is interesting. Well, let's dive into that a little bit more about the focus there. So, Mm -hmm. but I think, you know, again, we're really, really excited to talk about this because I think there's so many different forms of loyalty and what it means for different Mm -hmm. customer groups. So we'll chat about that, but let's do a quick catch up first. You, Why not? You just got back from an awesome spring break. We did. So in the Northeast, we have spring break late this late. year. It seems like it should be summer break Correct. at this point. Yes. But we, yes, we had spring break. We went to Ireland and to we did a long weekend in London and just got back on Monday. So yeah, a little jet lagged, but that's all good. Um, we were talking about what I love when I travel is I always, one, go to a grocery store. I know it's crazy, but mm-hmm. I love a grocery store in, in other countries because you can <laughs> kind of get a sense of food. I love snacks. I love those kinds of things. <laughs> yes. But also we love to do experience. Experiences, and we were talking about this company, Viator, V-I-A-T-O-R, who's yep. combined with TripAdvisor. So there's TripAdvisor is the master brand company, but then Viator is underneath that. But Viator, basically, you go onto the site, you can, Mandy, I think you said you might have booked a, a boat for mm-hmm. that. But if we did like the Cliffs of Kerry in Ireland, mm-hmm. it allowed us to have a concierge kind of virtual concierge that said, here's your driver. They're going to pick you up here. You're going to have a great day and follow up. But what I was telling you both is like, I feel like the pre-event communication and post-event communication really is amazing. And they're doing some really cool stuff there that I think deepens that we talk about loyalty. Yes. Wherever you travel in the world, you can use Viator. And they know the trips you've done in the past. And they say, hey, when you're in for us, Melissa, can coming up, why don't you do this? We know you like boats. We know you like bus trips. We know you like that. And it's just, I don't know, they're doing some really cool stuff and deepening relationships, I think. With and you're them. already loyal to them now. I am. So wherever we travel, and now I'm telling you both, like, you need to use it wherever you yeah. go. So there you go. That's amazing. But it's it was bit, fun. It was nice to be away. That's amazing. It is. It's funny, though, because it's very late. I mean, our, our spring break down in the South was in March. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also are most of the city schools get out earlier and yes. go back earlier. So my nephews go back in July. Whoa. Wow. And and just so you know, here, our last day is June 30th. Yeah. So yeah. imagine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. It's fascinating. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I've been traveling a ton, too. We've talked a lot about Pitchapalooza. this. Pitchapalooza. Pitchapalooza. It's been very, very busy. But um, the most exciting one recently, we were in um, Billund, Denmark, a meeting with Lego, which yes, is incredible. Yes, you were. So we'll I was jealous of that meeting. Um, but it's a great town, great experience. I mean, talk about a loyal brand. Um, just, you know, everything they do, the small touches, the big touches. It's just an impressive brand. So um, that was exciting just to kind of see how that town has built up around the experience of Lego, Lego Land, Lego House, which is the home of the brick. Yeah. Um, so very, very cool experience. And what a brand that's innovated themselves. Like innovation has been key to everything. Absolutely. Partnering, com- partnerships, all that they're doing with streaming, all the stuff from a movie, you know, with Marvel oh, or absolutely. Harry Potter or whatever that kept your kids mm-hmm. involved engaged. in Lego yep. and engaged with them throughout. So, yeah. or me when, you know, 45 years ago well, when I was a kid. 
or now there's a lot of Lego adults. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. Done. Done. So you've already told us about yourself, Mandy, so I'm excited about that. So what are some of the things that you're working on at Racetrack? Kind of give us some headlines so that our viewers can kind of hear all the amazing things so that when they're driving through the Southeast, they might want to pop by Racetrack as well. Yeah. So we have, um, in the last few years kind of expanded our offering and, you know, everyone in theory is a customer of a C store and yes. we all use them. So for us, it's continuing to shape things around whatever gets you going, yeah. um, oh. which is the racetrack way of, yeah. of approaching things and making sure that we have what you need, but also maintaining our brand. And so for us, as we've been expanding our footprint into other states, um, we've also started expanding our store formats. And so now we're also reaching professional drivers, ensuring that they're able to get diesel that they need on our oh. back courts. So we talk about the front court and the back court. It's the canopies that yeah. you all see when you're getting yes. gas. Yes. But as we're expanding that footprint, we're also expanding what our guest looks like and, and who that guest might be while continuing to maintain the clean um, standards that we set inside of the store, um, the spacious bathrooms, the clean brand look and feel so that you can recognize that it is a racetrack. It's somewhere that you want to stop. Um, so that's kind of where we've been focused. And then my team's role has been continuing to listen and understand what consumers are looking for. Um, so some of our big projects, we've been doing a segmentation refresh and trying to understand both what people say they want and what they actually want. Because um, uh -huh. they're not always <laughs> the same things. thing, yeah. right? Yes. Also, what gets you there might not be what keeps you there. Um, so there's a lot to unpack there. And so we've been doing segmentation work, but we've also been doing additional research around the role of price in C-Store and the role of price in in our stores, um, as well as continuing to evolve some of our internal comms and supporting HR with some em employee value prop. Work. Yeah, the segmentation part is really interesting to mm -hmm. me because we were talking earlier about because I'm a person who's brand loyal to when I'm on the road, mm -hmm. right? I know the certain things, whether I'm in the Northeast, Mid Atlantic, wherever I'm going to be, Southeast, racetrack, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> where I'm going to go because I'm going to get the things I need, mm -hmm. or I love that coffee, or I love that <laughs> snack, then I only know that I'm going to get there. And the fact that you're doing segmentation to focus on the people that are brand loyal to you mm -hmm. or that that is something that means something to them, I think is key. Instead of casting a wide net to say, everyone come to racetrack. Well, of yeah. course. But. Yeah. Well, and with that being said around, um, you know, more professional drivers and kind of focusing on that. What are some of the interesting insights you've learned? Because you've, you've, you're even changing some of the store formats, aren't mm -hmm. you? Just around like that other target audience that has grown to be really, really important to the brand. Yeah, it's interesting because I think um, – Initially, when you hear that, you may think only of truck drivers. Yes. And for us, a lot of our business has also been supported for a long time on our front court, our traditional canopy yeah. with work crews yes. and large groups of people showing up in the morning. If you were at our store at 730 in the morning, you will see massive groups of people coming in together yeah. in the line. Getting really their coffees, long. getting yeah. their gas right. and snacks for the day. It's a breakfast right. time. It's yeah. all the things. Yeah. And it's I think communal as, as, well. as marketers, we think about ourselves. It's we try not to do it. Of course, yeah. there's bias, right? <laughs> yeah. But yes. when we're approaching things, it's easy to think of a very traditional consumer. And even when we move to professional drivers to to maybe start to forget some of those other kind of yeah. middle areas. And the other thing that I think is interesting is some of the things we've learned about professional drivers are specific to when they're planning a longer route or even a shorter day trip. Yeah. However, they're still consumers. Yes. So they're not always driving that truck. They're yes. not always driving that van. They're not always delivering for Amazon. They're also a consumer of your store all of the other days of the week and all the other day parts. Exactly. And so for us, it's really focusing on the motivators regardless yes. of the occasion and then better understanding the that. occasions that surround those. It's funny. It made me think of like um, uh, the work we've done with Delta. We called it like leisure. Mm -hmm. Like you can be business traveler and a mm -hmm. leisure traveler. You kind of want to make sure you're hitting both sides yeah. and you have different needs in those mm -hmm. situations. So I love that because I might be coming there as an Uber driver in the moment, mm -hmm. um, but later on I'm coming to get gas for my personal car when I'm going out to dinner with friends. I, I love it. It's some of the things that you and I are dealing with, Melissa, when it comes to B2B. So we have, we can't forget that a B2B yep. like segment still is still a person who shops mm -hmm. at J Crew or mm -hmm. does whatever, you know, and yeah. or comes to racetrack. Yeah. So yeah. What's the most it. interesting thing you've learned in the segmentation? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, let's see. Um, there are a lot of things I think we have known our target for a long time. So we did segmentation a while ago. Um, and we, we cutely refer to our core segment as the better than average Joe. Oh, okay. Um, 
But that group has evolved and COVID had such an impact on everyone's behavior. Mm -hmm. Everyone was forced into digital adoption. Um, And what we've seen is there's actually a a younger subset of that same group that we would have seen maybe six years ago. And there is a lot of frequency of trip coming from Gen Z guests, snack occasions. If you think about like, this was months ago, but like girl dinner, all of those trends where someone is taking all these little items and putting them together, you can get all of those things at a C store. And so we have to kind of think about shifting to those needs and the tone of that audience. But we cannot forget about the people who have been so loyal to us. Um, One thing that's been really interesting is there's kind of a new group that's starting to emerge as we've been looking beyond that target segment. Um, And it is kind of the elder millennial age range up a little bit, but it's essentially parents. It's you have children in the household um, and there are differences in the way you shop when your children are present, when you're with your spouse, Mm -hmm. when you're with your friends, when you're alone. When you're by yourself. (laughs) When you're by yourself. (laughs) And what's funny is like, I think for a long time we maybe thought of our store is being like a respite. Like you would think of a target of like, I'm, I'm taking yeah, a break. I'm gonna like, take, I gotta yeah. walk around. And we have a very spacious format for that reason. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of perusing like, that you could do. Yeah. Um, in the lane, yep. And I think for that more, our original target of better than average Joe, I think that's still true. But for this kind of emerging segment, um, when they're alone, they actually, they really want to just get it done. They're yeah. like, I don't have in a lot of time because I have other things that I want to do when they're with their children. They're influenced by their children mm-hmm. because they just, they keep, they want to keep it moving. And mm-hmm. if the child wants something, they're probably going to cave if yeah, needed. Sure. Um, but the way we would Always. communicate yeah. those occasions is so different. And yeah. the motivators to all those different groups. It's funny you say that because on my last road trip to Florida, <laughs> I had my two nephews with me because my sister and her husband you are adorable. I, by yes, the way. they are adorable. And I, we did them a huge favor so they could go on a nice vacation for their anniversary. My little nephew asked to stop. He had to go to the bathroom a lot only because we would buy him candy. Mm. So as soon as I said, well, I, I'm not going to get you more candy at the, and he, okay, then I don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Pretty funny, but so your I normal wish you would trip keep of how many hours? Candy. Listen, exactly. <laughs> keep, yeah, asking keep asking. asking. <laughs> um, but yeah, the amount of like nerds, you know, so yeah. when we're with them, what I bought in my bag, I opened it and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this is like a sugar explosion to your point versus like when mm-hmm. it's just Jake and I going on a road trip. It's a very different basket. Yeah. That we leave with. So, yeah. Well, that's a cheat occasion for us. Yes. Like, that's mm-hmm. when I'm like, I've got my Doritos, yes. I've got my Rolos, mm-hmm. I've got my combos. combos like, all those things you. are my road, road trip, trip things that yeah. I would never, I try not to have at home anymore. Yeah. But those are the occasions I love a yeah. C store because I go in and I'm like, yes, it's all here and it's not overwhelming. Like, yeah. I can pick the things and go. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Yeah. So, as you talk about the segmentation, you mentioned pricing a little mm-hmm. bit. So, I'd love to just hear a little bit more around, like, the role of pricing, especially whether it's tied to segmentation, um, just knowing, you know, as you're thinking about going to a grocery store versus a pharmacy versus mm-hmm. a C-store, having some of the same choices. So, how are you guys thinking about pricing? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think as marketers, we we forget about the influence of a lot of other functions in the business Mm -hmm. and what we do. And so we work really, really closely with our merchandising partners at Racetrack. um, And the pricing function is critical to everything we do, obviously. Um, But what we've learned is, you know, the role of price, there there are a lot of hot takes on this. Let me first say that. Everyone's going to have a hot take on it. Um, You might be able to win short term with some price changes in what we call off lot or yeah, off yeah. of our lot yes. marketing. Yeah, I know. I love it. this terminology, the um, canopy off lot. But people come to a C store, like mm-hmm. forget racetrack for a second, because it is convenient for them. Yeah. And so other things may go out the window a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so it's important for us to think about what's going to get you there yeah. versus what's going to build the basket when in the store. Mm-hmm. And what we've learned in segmentation that's been really interesting is um, there's a, a wide spectrum of brand loyalty within C stores, mm-hmm. regardless of if it's to our brand or not, and your willingness to commit to a brand. Yeah. And oftentimes, you know, there's there's a group that is just going to come to a store because you're on the right. They want to turn right. They don't want to turn left at the light. And mm-hmm. and that's that's that. And mm-hmm. we love those Decision people too because yeah. they're yeah, still yeah. shopping our stores when it works for them, right? Yeah. But the group that really makes a difference to our business and who is buying deeply all of the categories in the store Mm -hmm. is willing to have that brand relationship and 
price plays a role in that because of course we still want to feel like there's a value to them sure. and we don't want to let them down in a time yeah. of need. Yeah. Um, and sidebar, I've been very impressed with like all of the IKEA messaging around that and, and uh -huh. the way they've kind yeah. of yes, for sure. approached value in a tough yes. time for consumers. Yep. But all that to say, I think it's been a refreshing reminder for us of like what got C stores here probably will keep C stores going and yeah. that's convenience mm -hmm. yes. and making sure that it is convenient and we're not reinventing the wheel or making things harder for them and continuing to remove friction from their experience. Yeah. Absolutely. No, because I think about there was a C store at the end of my street growing up in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's a racetrack actually. Mm -hmm. But I would many times when I was 16, my my mom would say, hey, run up and get a gallon of milk. Yeah. Run up and get this vanilla ice cream I made for my, you know, homemade yeah. apple pie. Run up and do that. Run up and and we never thought about I mean, again, different times, but it wasn't that I I wasn't going to go there because it was a dollar more for the milk yeah. or whatever. It's just I needed it. I needed it right then. It was then. convenient. Yeah. The other thing that I personally love about our brand is um, the people who make our stores run are incredible people mm -hmm. and we value them deeply. Yes. And they also are a representation of our brand and continue to build our brand for us. Yeah. And so that better than average Joe group, especially when you drill into the name. ones who are yeah. very, very loyal, um, like in our loyalty program, there are people who come every day who they might be playing the lottery. They might be buying a water. They right. want to talk to their person. Yep. And it's kind of that corner store mentality. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of that, especially in the Southeast, like it's cultural, yeah. some yeah. of that. And I personally love that about our brand. I know that even at the highest levels of leadership, Christmas, they're dropping off cookies to people in the store. Like, I love that's that. Yeah. And I know that our guest loves that. And that's something that we have to continue to, to reinforce and build around as well. Yeah, I love it. You've mentioned loyalty mm -hmm. a couple of times mm -hmm. already. This is called spilling the loyalty right. as well. <laughs> so before Spill we it. finish our conversation, I want to talk about what does loyalty mean to a C-store customer, mm -hmm. right? Because we talked about... It's convenient. It's there. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it pantry extension. That's how yes. I used to think of it as, as growing up. Mm -hmm. But what does it really mean and what are you trying to drive when it comes to, to a C store? Yeah. Um, so I think the thing that drives loyalty for us is delivering on speed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously convenience. We've, we've beat yeah, that yeah. horse. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, having everything they need in a one-stop shop yeah. and making sure that we've got the variety. If there is some new hot item that Frito-Lay is putting out, do we have that SKU? Right. Yeah. And making sure that if they're looking for it, it's there. And we have this and this and this. And yep. so making sure, if you're looking for a meal, we can give you a meal. If you're looking for things for the next three days and you're looking for six bottles of Gatorade, we're going to have that sure. too. Yeah. And I think that drives loyalty. But also, um, I do think the feeling of reward and incentive is important. For some people, that reward is the conversation they have yeah. with are mm -hmm. associates. So it's an emotional reward. Yes. Yeah. Some yeah. people it's very emotional. Yeah. Other people are very engaged in our loyalty program. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want the points. I want this. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think the recognition that they get from programs like ours helps to continue to drive that. Um, I do also think the neighborhood aspects and the community of Absolutely. it play a big role. Absolutely. I'm obsessed with it because I think like C store is a part of everyone's life. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we sometimes don't realize it mm -hmm. and because it's always there. Yep. It's there for us when we need it. It's yeah. there for us when I have to have that one thing for convenience. It's there. And it is a part of our life. It is a part of the community in your yeah. local area. Yeah. So. Well, we talk a lot about value exchange mm -hmm. as being like such a basis for relationships, loyalty. Um, we talk, you know, in friendships and life and family, right? If you're not getting a, a value of some kind, you, you aren't going to pursue that relationship. So I love that, like, again, the way you're talking about value value. It's not just you got a reward or you're getting points. It's relationships you're building, the convenience, the experience, because that's another piece for us. Like serum and loyalty is also about the customer experience. Mm -hmm. If you have bad Absolutely. experience, not going to be loyal. It's trust. No matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So I think that's the importance of like tying all these pieces together. You guys have focused a ton on the store the format, the experience, how you want to make people kind of feel when they come to you and why they choose you. Yeah. But then you're like, okay, we also need to consider how we're thinking about our pricing, how we're thinking about this program and how we reward quote unquote. So to me, you guys have really thought about all those important Agreed. components to drive loyalty better than I think a, a lot of your competitive set, frankly. Yeah. We're also we're a little biased, 24 but still. Yeah, 24 24-7. 7. I know. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And mm -hmm. it's a safe place to go, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. Female alone, mm -hmm. if I um there's not a racetrack by my house, um, 
like right by my house, unfortunately. And I don't usually get gas alone at night Mm-mm. because it's it's not safe. And yeah. I'll wait to go somewhere nicer, more you know, uh, safer. For real. Or I'll send Jake. Love you. I know. I love um, Jake. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's like a big part of it, too. It's like you want to feel safe. Um, and I, that's an important part of road tripping and just kind of the sea store experience as yeah. well. Awesome. Yeah. And welcome. I think. The thing that's also tough is as we expand, and I shouldn't say it's tough. I think it's a unique challenge that we're faced with, and it's an opportunity for us. How do we maintain the feeling of safety for all of our consumers yeah. as we expand what that consumer set looks like? Definitely. And how do we ensure that the experience is consistent regardless of which store you stop at? Yep. Is the bathroom still as clean as the other bathroom? And is that going to, yeah. to stop you next time and making sure that that doesn't happen? Yeah. Well, and to your point, the crew and, and your, yeah. the teams in the stores are so critical to that, right? Mm-hmm. Because if they're not going to maintain that experience, it changes and exactly. you'd probably see kind of a decrease. So I, I know that, that the crew and the, the team that are running the stores is so important to driving loyalty and you Absolutely. don't want to forget that. Yep. yep. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Mandy, thank you so much for being here with yeah. us today. I've enjoyed getting to meet you today. I didn't know you before today, but now I feel like we're fast friends. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for, it's always great for us to have our brands that we love uh, on the podcast. So Absolutely. thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for joining us and enjoy New Front today. So thank you. Um, for anybody listening, New Front, um, up front, we got a lot going on here in New York this week. Yes, and everyone's Digitas in town. <laughs> is hosting from 12 to 2.30. Um, some great content, really, really exciting. So I'm glad that you were able to come up and attend. Both Mandy and I live in Atlanta. So we're here in New York um, enjoying the uh, the fun week of New Front. So where are we next, Melissa? We will be live from Chicago wow. in two weeks. Yes. We are going to be going to CRMC and um, Salesforce Connections. Big week in Chicago it every year. It is a year. big week. It was hard to get a hotel. It was. Just so you know. <laughs> it was. And we are going to be spending some time with some other clients, with our great friends at Epsilon, um, and just kind of sharing. So coming soon, a couple more episodes live from Chicago. Yeah. And then after that, you and I head to South of France for Cannes, and yes. we're recording every day from Spotify Beach. So we're yes. excited about Very that. Very excited about that. Thank yes. you, Spotify. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for coming, Mandy. Thank Melissa, you. it's always good to see you. And always. that is Spilling the Loyalty for today.